last unicorn came around, it was like, oh no, I'm going to have to face my fear. Um, so, but it, I mean, it worked. I had to sit down and, and learn, you know, how horses move and what they look like and learn their anatomy. And, you know, how did you do that? Um, I just looked at a lot of photos usually. I try to, you know, see the real thing so that way I can adapt it in my own way. Ray wear a horse. Yeah, I made Ray dress up as a horse a few times. And <laughs> he does it anyway. <laughs> but I mean, next up is cars. I'm terrified of drawing cars. <laughs> that's that's pretty. I, I have at least, believe it or not, that's uh, Bernie Wrightson. He's just like, just no cars, please. No cars and no jobs. He hates both of them. Yeah, in the last issue of Serving Our Bones, my writer Ryan's like, I'm really sorry, but there has to be cars in this. And I'm like, no. <laughs> what do you do, though, usually? You just reference? Yeah, I try to, I try to you know, look at photos and stuff and try to make it the best I can. So, so now, okay. You know, this might be this might be a dumb writer question, but so it was just horses. Now, with, so dogs you could do. Yeah, I think dogs. Well, I had a dog, so like you know, okay. I could, but I didn't understand but you most. Need just <laughs> muscle structure. Yeah, I just wasn't. I'm not. You know, I just don't know about horses very much. So. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so you just watched a lot of photos. That must be really hard. And of, of course, drawing men is difficult. I, I think a lot of women artists have told me they have difficulty figuring out men. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, um, I know early in the discussion we were talking um, in general about how female writers, you know, Gail Simone and the current Bat um, Batgirl. Um, is there any male writers that you find that kind of, I know I have a few in my head that I particularly love their work because they seem to not objectify a woman, so to speak, and they really get into the habit of her being an actual character. Do you have any that you The one that's also, I'd say, is like probably Terry more just the all Strangers in Paradise is, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> so. Rachel Rice is really good. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then with his new series, I only have a first one. I haven't seen it. So. But yeah, I'm not very familiar with too many, especially lately because of the, you know, by comics with the kids. <laughs> but which ones do you like? I know I like Greg at Rock 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 and yeah. yeah, and Ed through Baker. They're, oh. they just write women really, really well. That's great. I need to look them up now. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out which comics I should buy. It's Fatal. Mm -hmm. He has his new creator own series. He's one of the only mm -hmm. three issues I have already. But it's the same it's his crime stuff, but he's it's now he's put some horror into it. Mm -hmm. Because he said sort of Hannah you know, hates HP Lovecraft. <laughs> that sounds cool. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. Any other writers that you think they have? You know, I'm not sure. I haven't really read I know, see this is yeah, this <laughs> like is the dread of every interview I do is just like please do this one. you can give um, people who are artists that would like to get into comics, like portfolio advice, um, um, meet and greets kind of stuff? I would, I would say mostly going to conventions is probably the most important. Just having that one-on-one -on -one contact with, yeah. with, that, with editors, publishers, just Bug editors, everybody. You know, <laughs> it's different than just getting an email or seeing a yeah. profile. You know, has, having that one-on-one -on -one interaction is very important. I, got, I found a picture of me and Ed, actually Brubaker, from 1987. Me and him both at Comic Con, just walking around with our stupid little Xeroxes. We were both 19, 20. <laughs> just why, and that's why we, but we did it year after year after year, just so people would see our faces, we meet the editors. And, you know, so that's the, you know, because that's the biggest misconception. And I'm sure you get this all the time. People are like, will you look at my art and break me into comics? Or, well, I read your stories. I'm like, the last person you want to go to with this stuff is us because we can't hire you. Well, you can, maybe. You know, for <laughs> okay. But um, for the most part, yeah, so it's talk to editors, meet publishers, you know, and those are the relationships you have to establish. You know, and then really, the one thing I always say, I, I, same thing with art, with writing. If you want to be an artist, if you want to be a writer, draw and write. 
because it's amazing how many people don't do that one simple step. You know, I have so many people who come, I want to be a writer. Great. What do you got done? Well, some stuff I want to tell you. You know, like, <laughs> Were things for me, you know, as a writer, I floundered for years when I found an artist. Because I didn't have, I didn't know what my scripts looked like in the text. Because I write scripts and I kind of picture things moving. I didn't know what it didn't look like. And then finally, when I found an artist, that taught me how to write comedy. You know, I was writing for that artist. And I realized I went from actually to writing, I used to write scripts like all flowery and that, you know, trying to be, you know, like romance the artist. Now I'm it sounds like I'm talking to him, you know. It's like, all right, this is what I want. This is the conversation, mm -hmm. you know, because I learned all the flowery writing stuff was just avoiding the point. Yeah. And mostly just going, hey, you should do this, this, this. I, I always like, I also really like when writers put in what the characters are feeling too at the time. Sometimes they just put in the dialogue, oh, I which is fine, you know, that, that helps too because you can kind of imagine what they're feeling, but it really does help when you uh, say, like, you know, he's saying, like, here's the dialogue. Frustrated because yeah. of the situation, and so that way they can try to incorporate that in their art too, and maybe they wouldn't have figured that out just because they're not alone. So. Really, that's what comic scripts are. To me, it's just 50% of the work, and it's my job as a writer is to make you excited about what it is. So that's yeah, I totally will overwrite the panel sometimes, just that kind of stuff. Like, you know, just you know, he's not sure of himself, that she, and what's going on in their brain, because yeah. then. Fiona, that stuff gets in there. It's amazing. You know, she put in those, those little gestures. Also, I mean, it's not, you know, Greg Root also did that. Mm -hmm. He's also another amazing artist. Yeah, I, love, I love the small things, the small gestures and facial expressions. I mean, some comics I see, even though they're really nice, but their face is just kind of blank and they're talking and their mouth is just open slightly, yeah. even though they can say anything. Yeah. But so if you can even draw, you know, what they're saying at the time, which sometimes you can Exactly, because honestly, my thing, and I, I've only done about three or four times with my stuff, but if I can tell the story with just pictures and word balloons, mm -hmm. that's my practice. And a lot, of, in other words, make myself disappear. You know, I mean, just because, and that's how you get yourself in that corner. People think the artist does everything, mm -hmm. but I did that with Greg Root. I, don't know, I did a book called Fruits of the Heartland, and uh, he had about. You know, and yeah, but with breaking and things, persistence, you know, and, and just stick to it. We both, you know, when, how old were you when you finally? Um, when I got into comics? Yeah. Uh, let's see, the first comic, probably just three, maybe two, something like that. And I, I, I wish I would have not quit after high school. <laughs> I wish I would have just kept going, because, uh, yeah. I got it. But I lived, yeah, I lived in a, a town where, because I moved 20 miles north of Crescent City to an even smaller town. <laughs> so, I mean, comics was pretty much non existent. So, it really made me feel like, you know, there's just no way. I'm just um, curious because yeah, it's a comic store. So, it's, it's post. You grew up in the direct market. Yeah, I think I believe, I mean, I graduated in 2000, and that's about the time I, I just kind of stopped drawing altogether, which was really sad. <laughs> so, well, but I mean, it kind of made me realize how much I missed it because I was thinking, like, oh, it won't be anything, so I'll just stop. And, and then a couple years later, I was like, well, I really do miss it, and I want to try to make something of it. I'm going to try really hard to you know, do that. So. Well, I'm so glad you got back into it. It yeah. worked out really good. And I actually think we made it through the panel. Great. Right. You did it. Right? You did it. And yeah. everybody should at least pick this up and you know, take a look at it. It's an amazing piece of work. And yeah. really, congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for the prop. And that's, I think that's it. Thank you guys for Thanks coming for so much.